And welcome to Free Speech Radio with me, Stephen Hartley, Monday nights. And today we're going to be having a little look at the anatomy of our bodies. And uh, this is something we should all know, really. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the hormonal system. And... Uh, really having a understanding what this is. So it's actually called the endocrine system. The endocrine system. These, these are glands, as we usually know them as glands. And in there one you would have heard of is the pancreas. So this is connected to c the creation of enzymes in the body now, whenever there's a reaction in the body, it requires an enzyme to start it off. So these enzymes are involved in everything. And it's interesting there to see that the pancreas is considered part of the hormonal system. And that's right in the middle of your torso, if you like, um, sort of where the where your belly button is, or a bit bit higher maybe, a bit higher there, and it's right next to your adrenal glands, uh, you've got two of those. And then further up into your chest cavity, so right in the center of your chest, is the thymus gland, and then further up in your throat, you've got the thyroid gland. Now that's particularly interesting to me because if we've been talking about heart palpitations and it's it might not be heart palpitation at all, it's actually possibly your thymus gland coming into action because I felt it sort of um, going up towards my throat. And I've said this before when I've had these, they're not unpleasant. It, it's just a little bit disconcerting, you think, am I about to die? <laughs> but, yeah, I didn't. And uh, <laughs> But the, the one I had most recently, and I hadn't had one for a while, um, the one I had most recently seemed to be lasting quite long. So I wanted to have a think about it and um, try and be a bit critical, because I was thinking if that's say my worry was that that was uh, the arteries near my heart struggling to pump blood around and being restricted you know so that was my worry um, but I did I did feel like this is going towards my throat so you know why why would there be blood pumping there plus I thought you know the the main arteries aren't they near the spine and you know I, I'm, this isn't near the spine or anything so you know it's quite difficult isn't it you sort of imagining where things are in your body and are they at the front are they at the back and things like that anyway so further up uh, part of the endocrine system part of the hormonal system we've got the pituitary gra gland the pineal gland and the hypothalamus they're all in the brain area. And then below the pancreas, uh, if you're a woman, you've got your ovary glands. And if you're male, you've got your testes. So imagine that your hormonal system or your endocrine all needs to be in balance. And, you know, the everything needs to be doing its job for you to be feeling great as you were when you were born and for most of your childhood but um, you know so a lot of this goes wrong with people and the another reason why I'm talking about this now is I actually had another idea of mine as I tend to get that the hormones command the immune system and even before that, your your hormones, in a sense, guide you. And 
it'll be individual to every single individual it's like there's some sort of built-in path for you to take uh, in your life and when you veer off the path it's sort of like your hormones stagnate they refuse to cooperate and your hormones will push and urge you into doing something which your brain might be telling you shouldn't do or other people are telling you shouldn't do for whatever reason and in a sense this is why people do these sometimes seemingly crazy things but how often do they actually end up uh, the right thing to do so this is my my idea and so then if you're not doing what your hormones uh, want you to do and they sort of shut down and stop operating so you don't feel great anymore and then you you go to other things in order to get the the, the feelings that you want but then you know you take it too far and your immune system can actually turn against you and get what we see with these autoimmune diseases so this is just a theory but I, I wanted to have a look at the hormonal system and I'm just going to go a little bit further and just take a look at the more specific one which may be confused with heart palpitations is the thymus gland and Let's have a little look at uh, Wikipedia or something like that and see what it says about it. The thymus is a specialized primary lymphoid organ of the immune system. Within the thymus, thymus cell lymphocytes or T cells mature. T cells are critical to the adaptive immune system, where the body adapts specifically to foreign invaders. The thymus is located in the upper front part of the chest, in the anterior supermediastinum, behind the sternum, and in front of the heart. It is made up of two lobes, each consisting of a central medulla and an outer cortex surrounded by a capsule. The thymus is made up of immature T cells called thymocytes, as well as lining cells called epithelial cells, which help the thymocytes develop. Excuse my pronunciations here. I'm <laughs> obviously not practiced reading this. T cells that successfully develop react appropriately with MHC immu immune receptors of the body called positive selection and not against proteins of the body called negative selection. The thymus is the largest and most active during the neonatal and pre-adolescence periods. By the early teens, the thymus begins to decrease in size and activity. Ah, interesting. Isn't that what I was just saying? And the tissue of the thymus is gradually replaced by fatty tissue. Nevertheless, some T-cell development continues throughout adult life. So that is particularly interesting. I wasn't expecting it to say that or anything else. Let's carry on. Abnormalities of the thymus can result in a decreased number of T-cells and autoimmune diseases such as autoimmune polyendocrine syndrome type 1 and myasthenia gravis. These are often associated with cancer on the tissue of the thymus, called thymoma, or tissues arising from immature lymphocytes such as T-cells called lymphoma. Removal of the thymus is called thymectomy, although the thymus has been identified as a part of the body since the time of the ancient Greeks. It is only since the 1960s that the function of the thymus in the immune system has become more clear. Wow, that was a really interesting few paragraphs with some specific points to have another look at. Firstly, how 
they say the thymus is largest and most active during the neonatal and pre-adolescent periods. By the early teens, the thymus begins to decrease in size and activity. Let's see, it has goes on to that a bit. One of the major characteristics of vertebrate immunology is thymic involution, the shrinking involution of the thymus with age resulting in changes in the architecture of the thymus and a decrease in tissue mass. This process is generally regulated with the nucleic material responsible being an... Sorry, it goes on. So I think that... So, you know, they're making their own conclusions, I guess. But if we just took what I said before I read this, it absolutely points to what I'm saying. There's something that in life that pretty much all of us are doing which results in a, a reduction of one of our very important organs. I just said right from the start, the hormonal system is a system. Each part must play its part. Now what are we doing? We know that fluoride if it attacks, attaches with aluminium, which is very common, and can go into the blood-brain barrier, can calcify the pen pineal gland, which is a gland that makes you feel good. Now, if we're doing that, and then the next thing that starts to suffer is the thymus gland, which operates, makes T cells and things important for your immune system to keep you alive, and then that suffers right it's not good and then the next thing down the line is the pancreas ah but we did leave out there is another one in between the thymus gland and the pi pineal gland and that is thyroid gland A lot of us have heard of this before. They talk about uh, thyroid gland problems often in women. Thyroid. The thyroid or thyroid gland is an endocrine gland, hormone system, in the neck consisting of two connected lobes. The lower two thirds of the lobes are connected by a thin band of tissue called the thyroid isthmus. The thyroid is located at the front of the neck, below the Adam's apple. Microscopically, the functional unit of the thyroid gland is, a se is the spherical thyroid follicle, lined with follic follicular cells, and occasionally parafollicular cells that surround a lumen containing colloid. The thyroid gland secretes three hormones. The two thyroid hormones and blah, 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 and a peptide hormone, calcotocin. The thyroid hormones influence the metabolic rate and protein synthesis. And in children, grow and development. Growth and development. Right, so the thyroid hormones influence the metabolic rate, your metabolism, how you process food, and protein synthesis. So that's recreate protein biosynthesis is a core biological process occurring inside cells, balancing the loss of cellular proteins through the production of new proteins. Proteins perform a variety of critical functions as enzymes, structural proteins or hormones, and therefore are crucial biological components. So thyroid hormones influence the metabolic rate, protein synthesis, and in children, growth and development. Right. Okay, so I mean, and we do continue to develop throughout our life. So you could uh, remove that and in children bit. <coughs> Just say, and. <laughs> right, uh, let's read on to the next paragraph. There's a lot of long words in the next one. The thyroid gland develops in the floor of the pharynx at the base of the tongue at three to four weeks gestation. 
It then descends in front of the farallon gut and ultimately over the next few weeks it migrates to the base of the neck. During migration, the thyroid remains connected to the tongue by a narrow... Ca I mean, I don't think I need to know what happens to the thyroid during birth. Thyroid disorders include um, a loaded list of long words. And then a bit more... Uh, yeah, I know there are a lot of problems with the thyroid. But again, it should be should be treated along with the entire endocrine system the hormone system so I just want to reiterate what I said before we even before I even looked at anything there I said the hormones govern the immune system and we've already read there the thymus gland responsible for creating some of these T cells and uh, the hormone system also guides us in our life so it's your hormone system which lets you know in a sense when you're when you're doing something you love when you when you enjoy it the hormone system is saying yeah do this right let's take an example you know dead poet society the boy wants to be an actor but his dad wants him to have a serious job. The boy's body is telling him he wants to be an actor. That's where he gets his joy from. The pressure from the father is so great that the boy can't break free except to kill himself. Okay, that's a extreme example. But I'm sure anyone who's lived a number of years on this planet understand when they feel like they don't want to do stuff they feel unmotivated they don't like what they're doing but they're forced to and how it how you can manage but you can't thrive so that is the lesson of the day and I'm going to end this little introductory to the new channel on that note so, expect a lot more, and uh, ciao for now.